my sister managed to graduate from high school, but because of her undocumented status and little support, she couldn't go forward. This meant as the youngest of my siblings, I had to get a higher education. This meant um, that I had to get us out of what we called the hood, South Central LA. I applied to many other charter schools, but I chose Los Angeles Big Picture. I was so flustered during our first summer session. At one point I said to myself, what am I doing here? The school had high expectations. They wanted us to generate projects around our interests. Asking a 14 year old what she or he is interested in, you know what they would say? They would say having a boyfriend or a girlfriend. Now, you want to know about my summer project? I was, I did my project around stray dogs in the community. I thought to myself, what, how am I going to get anywhere with these kind of projects? Like, what is, what kind of school is this, you know? Luckily, in ninth grade, I sent, signed up for an environmental class called Word to Mother Earth with Jessica Davis, as you've seen, um, where I watched Al Gore's documentary, An Inconvenient Truth, the most horrifying documentary that I had ever seen at that time. The first year led me to focus on searching for better ways to create a better environment in my community. In 10th grade, I got an internship with Communities for a Better Environment, a nonprofit who showed me to go further than just research, but to be an active citizen by joining protests and petitioning. This internship helped me research more about my community's issues like food insecurity and environmental injustice. I plan to continue this, I had planned to continue this internship through summer because I had found something that I was truly passionate about. It was going to be the perfect summer, but sometimes you just have to accept unexpected events. It was Friday, May 2nd, 2008. We had just returned from our college tour of the Claremont Colleges in Pomona, California, which I thought would be my future college campus. I got a ride home and saw cops in the main street of my, by my house. And all I thought was maybe it was some accident, some car accident. But my brother Beto was suddenly gone. He was shot by gang members. This meant <laughs> I thought I wasn't going to do this, sorry. Um. Don't clap. <laughs> um, okay. He was shot by gang members. And this event was painful. painful, but I was able to turn that pain into strength. Oh, not right now. So it opened my eyes and inspired me to become a community activist to help create a safer 
I know your place. So people won't feel the same pain my family and I felt. My school was so supportive, how my family raised money, and my advisors and principals showed up at the funeral home where we had service, the service for him. <laughs> if it wasn't for their support, I think I would have quit school. After my brother's death, I missed school for a whole week. I didn't really care about continuing. My advisor visited me at home and brought my friends with her so they could be of support. I remember that day she visited me. She had a car full of them. And along with them, the money they had fundraised for me. And this story is not meant to scare you or to think that you have to be involved deeply in every student's life but to show, show you that without the support or push from my school, I wouldn't have made it. Just showing that you are there for your students and believe in the potential of the student can go a long way. During that summer, I decided to get involved in this summer school to be a peer counselor for the new freshmen. Did I talked to Nicole and Jessica about being in charge of the environmental science project that connected to the book by Paul Fletchman entitled Seed Folks. The book, the book, can I get some napkins? Oh my God. Thank you. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, okay. The book involved a little girl, Kim, who planted in a trash vacant lot in her community in remembrance of her father who had died. Her lima beans grew and caused her community members to want to plant as well. The community eventually comes together to create a community garden. I got together with other peer counselors and created a Gedea gardening action plan as part of the science project for the ninth graders. We scouted vacant lots and even parkways that needed some cleaning. I saw it as a way to help me heal and as a way to prevent my community from going through the pain my family and I went through. The support I got from the staff was really empowering because I didn't see myself as a leader, but they helped me find that opportunity to become one. Our first day out in the streets of South Central, as Gadilla Gardeners, we got put up against the wall. Okay, do we have a slide? And as you saw, I think she showed the picture. Oops. I forgot to show you that picture, but okay. Um, wait, wait, go back. Okay. So we got put up against the, the wall. Um, it was pretty interesting. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, so our first days out, OK. So we got put up against the fence. LAPD thought we were gang members because we were all wearing the same color. Does that look to you? Same color, really? <laughs> Plus, we were wearing our uniform. <laughs> Not, okay, no, okay. I still think about it, no. LAPD thought we were gang members because, okay, so they didn't really give us a chance to tell them we were gardening. <laughs> Even though they saw our tools right next to us. But LAPD couldn't stop, scare us or stop our green revolution. Some advice, 
Believe your kids when they call you and tell you that they are being held against the wall for gardening. <laughs> I called Jessica to come help us out, but she just left. She said we were joking. <laughs> and she hung up on me. Yeah, we had that close relationship with her, and we would joke around with her, but this was something we wouldn't joke about. This, this situation only pushed me to be better organize our guerrilla gardening group, which we called the South Central Resistance. We were ready to resist, to fight back, and plant more than what we did that day. So our motto became, Green the hood for the common good. We created an event called the Big Dig to bring out the community, to bring out the community, and for them to be able to participate in a new movement. Well, not so new, but in South Central. This was a step closer to helping create that unity and a greener space. So to produce that safety. I have learned that not everyone is made to attend a higher education institution, but to have the choice to go to college is wonderful. Because of the BPL model, I became a great leader and found that passion that pushed me to look for a better future and construct a better environment for my community. My school gave me many college options to choose from, but I decided to reach further than what I knew. My leadership and spirit pushed me to go outside my comfort zone, pushed me across to North Carolina, where, no, where I now, okay, that was another picture, <laughs> where I now keep flourishing my leadership skills as the president of the Latino Club on campus, a mentor of three freshmen for a student of color mentor program, which I helped organize a community service coordinator, a leader of the Latino Youth Mentoring Program for the community, and a resident assistant of one of the upperclassmen dorms. As you can see, I included condoms because that's one of my duties to <laughs> fill out. You, they tell us to fill it out every month, but they seem to be getting filled out every week. I don't know what college students are doing. The transition to college was easy. Well, academically, because personally, it was really hard to be outside of my comfort zone. I am now studying social work because I want to work on a one-on-one -on -one basis with community members from South Central LA. Everything that I'm currently doing is connected to what I want to do for the rest of my life. And I was able to find that passion because of my advisor's push. The big picture learning model was crazy at first. But as I got to learn more about myself, it became easier. I had no problem writing research papers, conducting interviews for projects, or managing my time when I, got, when I went into college. My first two years of college, I met with my college advisor a lot of times to talk about classes that I was interested in and how to make connections with the community organizations to learn outside of just textbooks. My college advisor was surprised to me and said, I've never met a freshman so involved and organized. All I could say was, thanks to my high school, I look for more no knowledge gained through, I'm more, I, sorry, I look for more than knowledge gained through books, but through the community. Because of the teachers like you, teachers that care, I want to give back to my community. Teachers that care and that take time to connect to and understand an individual student are of great value. And I just want to let you know that I appreciate you. I am sure that I'm not the only one. And I'm sure that you've heard it many times from important officials or even superintendents. <laughs> but I really mean it. And yes, 
sometimes it's hard to work with students, parents, community, and mentors. But know that if you continue to push for better opportunities for students, great minds can be created and great things will occur. Once again, thank you. And thank you for your hard work and perseverance. And I would like to leave you with a quote that I chose. So one looks back with appreciation to the brilliant teachers, but, to, but with gratitude to those who touched our fe human feelings. The curriculum is so much necessary raw material, but warmth is the vital element for, growing, for the growing plant and for the soul of the child. <laughs>